Hello. How's everyone doing today? Coming on following Catalina, so that's rough for me. Once some people get in here, go ahead and give me a shout out if you can hear me, so that way I know that my audio is working. It should all be good. Tested everything before. But for those of you that are here, welcome to Masters of the Dungeonverse, uh, or into the Dungeonverse. Uh, Masters of the Dungeonverse is the program that I run for New Minds, which is a really fantastic uh, opportunity that I was given a couple of years ago at Camp Pursuit, which I am wearing. Uh, I wanted to wear my Camp Pursuit Camp Pursuit, but I'll wear my brain shirt from Camp Pursuit instead. So let's see. So in Into the Dungeon Verse, we're going to use this as an opportunity to kind of explain what roleplay is, how you do it, what are some op opportunities that New Minds and Masters of the Dungeon Verse offers. Uh, you will hear my son around in the background, Malcolm. Uh, he's about two years old, and uh, he has decided since uh, Mommy and Dadu, Dadu is me, uh, are home all the time now that bedtimes don't exist at all anymore. <laughs> so that's exciting. Hi to those checking in. Just uh, hopping in here to Into the Dungeon Verse. Good to see you. If you want to hop into the chat, let me know that you can hear me. We know you're here. Let me make sure I've got the chat open. This is my first time using Facebook Live, actually. Um, I think I might have gone once before. So welcome to Into the Dungeonverse. I see a couple people checking in. We're going to start by explaining what uh, roleplay is, and if anyone, again, wants to hop in the chat, let me know that you're here. Uh, what your level of experience is with roleplay. Hello. Good to see you. Some friends uh, from summer camp last year. Excited to bring this roleplaying experience to you. And I do have some exciting news, since you were interested in Masters of the Dungeon Verse, we are switching to an online format. Hi, Macy. Good to see you. And Lisa. So we are switching to an online format with everything going on, and we're all stuck at home um, right now. Masters of the Dungeon Verse is continuing to continue to provide a sense of normalcy for everyone. We're switching to online programming. Uh, we use programs like Roll20 and Discord to connect our players. We actually just had our first trial session yesterday, which was... Fantastic. I mean, lots of technical issues as we tried to get, I think we had 13 kids in one room. We need to split it up. But it was awesome experience to uh, to see everyone connecting and getting to talk and uh, just experience again uh, the role play. And uh, we set up, we're doing some Marvel games uh, with a group. Mr. Walter, uh, who you're going to see later on, um, is running that. And then um, I'm going to be running Star Wars RPG, which is a, a classic and a perfect adventure for for right now. Um, so now we got a few more people in here. I want to really hop into the meat of like what role play is. So um, if you have any role play experience, uh, go ahead and hop in the comments and tell me what your experience is, what you've done. But for those of you who are like totally new to role play and, and that experience in role play, I mean role playing games. Um, and the further applications of role play come into training and uh, learning and uh, education as well. We actually use it a, a lot in uh, New Minds Enrichment in our classes. Uh, when you are invested in a scenario, uh, the results and the learning that you that you get out of it are much more tangible than uh, sitting in a, in a laboratory, so to speak. Good to see you, Justin. Shayna and Abby, thanks for stopping in. I appreciate seeing you here today. I hope that you can warm up by my campfire here. I put the campfire up because for those of you, <laughs> those of you who've ever read Robert Frost's poem, Snowed In, that's what I felt like the, uh, the past few days as we're here inside the house and we're finding ways to entertain ourselves and finding ways to uh, annoy each other and get on each other's nerves. Um, <laughs> It, it, it feels very much so like being snowed in, and um, I'm, I'm glad that I get to share this with all of you and get to be here. So roleplay is a very powerful tool that we have, and it's something that we've actually done for a very long time. Um, we just refined it and become very good at it lately. So roleplay is when you take on... <laughs> Roleplay is when you take on the perspective of another character, whether this is an half-orc knight or an elven wizard 
or a gnomish barbarian. Uh, each one of those is going to have a very different perspective. They're going to have different motivations, different needs, different wants, different fears. And when you play this character, you're trying to implement all of those things. You're not trying to be you. You're trying to be this character. And while we are using fictional characters, um, obviously all of our characters, all of our art, uh, is an expression of our humanity, right? And that uh, creation of characters allows us to connect with different parts of our humanity. When we create a character that's different from ourselves, we're learning to connect with a person that is different from ourselves. Um, I have tried to play characters that talk less when I play to help me expand um, my understanding of people who aren't just someone who never shuts up, which is me sometimes, um, which you have a whole hour of that. Welcome to this. <laughs> we'll see if we make it a whole hour. We'll see if we still have viewers. So role playing is taking on that view. And a lot of times we do it through the through the view of, or through the lens of games like Dungeons and Dragons or um, sometimes a Star Wars RPG. There's tons of different kinds, though, and more that come out that expand uh, expand the range of play that we have to offer. So Oh, I'm getting hearts and likes. Fantastic. It's all streaming up now. I don't know if we've been getting those, but it all came up for me right now. So I'm going to take it as just a very sudden <laughs> burst. So we're going to do a couple of things today as um, as we hop into role play and we experience this. I'm going to tell you more about our program. And if you stay tuned until the end, I am going to give you a five dollar off code for uh, our online program. We're going to be running. Let me tell you a little bit about that. We're going to be running three sessions this Saturday, one starting at 12, one starting at two and one starting at four o'clock. Uh, they're going to run for an hour and a half. They are twenty five dollars. But if you stay tuned until the end, you will get a five dollar code. Hi, Kristen. Hi, Ben. Good to see you. Thank you for stopping in. So we'll get a $5 code to that. We'd love to check that out. That's going to be a contained story. We're going to teach you how to play. You're going to get to pick characters, and you're going to get to hop right into it. Uh, Role-playing is a very fun experience, but it's also a very enriching experience. So we're going to we're gonna hop into uh, some of my – one of my favorite uh, pieces, and you'll hear me talk about it a lot, is I love The Lord of the Rings by J.R.R. Tolkien. And we actually uh, are going to do a little bit of kind of – Let's, let's call it a quiz show. Now we have a few more people in here. Um, if you've seen Lord of the Rings before, don't don't shout out who these characters are yet on the screen. Um, but we are going to, we're going to do a little quiz. I'm going to tell you about some characters in Lord of the Rings. Uh, specifically, I'm going to tell you about the Fellowship of the Ring. Um, and an important part of character design is creating a character that's immediately recognizable at a distance, at a silhouette. So with just a little bit of information, I'm going to see if any of you can guess what these characters or who these characters are. And then we're going to go on to a little activity. Um, if you are going to participate, I'd like you to go ahead and get a piece of paper and pencil now because you might want to write down your guesses or some information. And we are going to do a little activity with character creation and drawing uh, later. So if you want to participate in that, grab a piece of paper, pencil, really anything that you can write on and anything that can write. Um, not, not the walls, though. That would be a bad idea. So parents... Note that I did put in that disclaimer, we are not drawing on the wall, but get creative. If you are running out of paper, if you've already used it for all of your crafts, paper plate could work right on the back, and then you can still use it later on. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about a few of these characters, and then we're going to guess and see. And I'm curious if anyone will get all of them right if they haven't seen it before. So if you haven't seen the Lord of the Rings films by Peter Jackson's, can you, can you throw a comment in and let me know? And we're going to tell you a little bit about these now, and then we'll see who gets it right. So there are nine characters in the Fellowship. I'm going to start with uh, the character who brings them all together. His name is Gandalf. Gandalf is a wizard, and Gandalf is a friend of Frodo. Frodo is probably the most important character in the Fellowship because he carries the One Ring, which is the goal of this party to destroy. So Gandalf is a wizard and kind of the de facto leader of the party. Frodo is the most important hobbit. Hobbits are short creatures. They're very tiny. They're not uh, as large as dwarves, but they're much smaller than humans. They're called halflings because they're about half the size of a man. There are three other halflings traveling with Frodo. 
there is his best friend, or well, more of his servant, actually, Samwise, who is very good at handling things like uh, cooking and gardening. He's a practical hobbit who works very hard. And then two other hobbits that are very much so like best friends, Merry and Pippin, they are always together. There's also Gimli. Gimli is a dwarf. He's very stocky, but short, but taller than a hobbit. Then there are two men, Boromir, who is a defender. He protects the people of Gondor and Aragorn, who is a ranger. He is a man of the wild, but possibly a leader and protector as well. So we're going to start at the back. And this is where I need interaction from you all. Who is this character based off of that description that I just gave you? Does anyone know who this character might be? If you don't remember the names, you can use the description that I gave you. Or if anyone knows any of the characters, give it a guess. And so now I wait for you. This is the stare down. Does anyone have a guess on what any of those characters are? I did forget to describe Legolas the Elf. He is a graceful archer. So based off of the silhouettes that you see, you're trying to guess these characters. If you don't know the character from the description, why don't you try to tell me what these characters' roles are? All right, looks like we've got some comment moving. Hold on, let me get back on the screen. An elf. I see a question there. An elf is a generally very tall, uh, thin kind of creature. They are human-like. They have very pointy ears, but that won't be important to this quiz. All right, I'm going to give two minutes. If we don't have a guess in two minutes, I will move on to the art activity where we create our own characters and we look into that element. Hi, Janet. Thanks for joining. Right now, we're trying to see if we can guess these characters based off of descriptions I gave earlier. We have a wizard, a protector human, a ranger human, a dwarf who uses armor and an axe, perhaps, and four hobbits, one of them being more important than in the others, with a hobbit being small in stature. I'll give one more minute for guesses, if you're tuning in, and then I'll do a little breakdown of this. So let's start with this character in the front. We're going to do a little breakdown. The cool thing about character silhouettes is that they can actually tell us a lot about the character, and there's actually a ton of storytelling in this one shot. Visual storytelling can be important to understand because it helps us analyze and break down the stories that we're learning. So I'll do a little breakdown of these, and then you can see if your personal guesses were right. You might have had some that you were that you're saving. So here in the front, we have Gandalf, who is a wizard. We can tell he's a wizard because he has a pointy hat. You might be able to see that he's kind of using a walking staff, a walking stick. Classic descriptions. Hi, Janet. Classic uh, descriptions and features of a wizard. Now, directly behind him, we have Frodo. Frodo knows Gandalf, so he's always very close to him. And since Gandalf is kind of the de facto leader, he's in the front. This one could argue that maybe it's Aragorn because he has a bow. But if you look at how tall and thin this character is compared to the other character that might have a bow, you can tell that this is definitely Legolas, and he's an elf. And he's followed directly by Gimli, who's a little bit taller than the halflings. We are not going to play D&D on this session. Um, but we are going to create some characters here in just a moment. So if you have some paper and pencil, we're going to do a little art activity. And then we will be doing a reading of one of my favorite stories. And at the very end, we will give you information on how you can join us and play D&D this weekend, Saturday. 
In the middle here, we've got the two halflings, Merry and Pippin. We know that they're friends. We know that they're together. And they're kind of hanging out here by Boromir, who is the protector. And you can see he has a shield on the back of his. Samwise, the character who's very good at practical things, he's the one that carries the horse. Or not carries the horse, but leads the horse. And he's followed by Aragorn, the human who is kind of on the edge. He's a ranger, right? So the... The experiment that we're, not the experiment, the activity that we're going to do, and this is why you need your paper and pencil, is we are going to create our own character silhouettes. Uh, we're going to try to think of what kind of character we might want to play in a role-playing game. Would we want to be a knight who stands tall in their armor with a sword and shield? Would we want to be a small character who blends into the shadows? Would we want to be uh, a wizard who uses large movements to cast spells and draws the attention to them be out of like a sense of theater, perhaps? Right? So that's where you're going to need some pencil and paper for that one. All right, so to give you some further examples of silhouettes, I have some popular shows and movies pulled up. Does anyone recognize any of the characters from this? The company actually just recently released the sequel to this film early, ahead of schedule, which was a very nice gesture in this time when we're all locked in. Any shout-outs in the comments? Do you recognize these characters or at least the movie that they're from? We've got some pretty distinctive silhouettes where we can really, if you've seen the movie, you know who these characters are almost immediately. Do we have any fans of this one out there? I'm sure we do have at least a few. Oh, the crickets. Crickets hurt. I'm just kidding. There we go. I'm splitting screen, so it takes me a little bit. Oh, Mr. T, good to see you. Thanks for checking in. Burr, he says. Burr. Could this be from Frozen? It is. It is from Frozen. And you can actually almost tell from the color scheme right away. Uh, I think I know most of the characters. Okay. I want to say Sven is the name of the caribou? Oh, I'm going to get slammed for this because I don't know these very well. Yes, we've got Frozen. Someone guessed it. And then um, Olaf is the snowman. I remember that. I love that character. I really enjoyed him. And then Elsa, we can tell her because she has this nice uh, kind of fancy... Uh, oh, what's that called? Shawl, I think is the word I'm looking for. Um, and I don't remember that guy's name. And I'm pretty sure that's a new character. That looks like a gnome. Maybe he was raised by gnomes. I haven't seen... I've seen Frozen once, so don't judge me on the lore. I know a lot more about Tolkien or uh, C.S. Lewis's lore than I do about Frozen. But you can tell these characters right away, and you can kind of get a sense of their personality as well. There are a couple more that I want to show you as well and see if any of you recognize them. And then we'll hop on to our activity. If you need a digital resource for doing this drawing activity, I will hook you up here in just a second. Uh, there's lots of lots of flying things on this one. This one might be a little harder to recognize because of the size of the screen. Uh, I will figure out some better ways to share these images in the future. I think there is a screen sharing option I'll have to check out. Um, but this is from How to Train Your Dragon, and uh, you can actually, if uh, if you're familiar with it, you should be able to pick out most of the characters. Stoic pops out right away because he has the widest stature of any character on here. He almost has as wide of a stature as a dragon, which is indicative of his character. It's telling him, uh, telling us that he is formidable enough to face a dragon, which his character is. All right. And then this one, super recognizable. Cartoons are, are known for their recognizable characters because they use more simplified shapes. First person to guess all six, I will answer any question. you got to put all six characters in the comments, and I'll answer any question as long as it's appropriate to answer on Facebook Live. Let's see. We've got some comments rolling in. Yes, Mr. Justin saw Toothless on there. Mr. T, great suggestion on moving it. Uh, I've got this set up very particular with a very long Ethernet cable. We are in the exact position we have to be in. Uh, but I will, I will tweak that for next time. 
So I will answer any personal question, what my most embarrassing moment was in middle school, anything like that. If you can guess all six characters on here. This one's been around for a while now. It started when I was a kid. It's still going, I believe. I don't know if they're making new content or just doing reruns. And New Minds did just drop a link to our uh, online Masters of the Dungeon verse. Oh, no, no, no. I'm sorry. That's talking about our program that's going on right now this second. SpongeBob, Gary, Patrick. Okay, that's three out of six. Mr. Justin, no, no gold for that. You do not get to ask any question. Can anyone guess all six? Now you really only have to guess three because we've given you half of them. I'll give two more minutes for this. Two more minutes to guess the characters on here. I mean, one of them even looks like his last name. Well, that was one that Justin guessed. Squidward, Mr. Krabs. Oh, one more, Mr. Justin, and then you get to ask any question, and I'll answer it once you post it. Can you get one more? <laughs> I hope your daughters are helping you out here. <laughs> Shayna, I'm glad that you are enjoying it so far. All right, I'm going to move on. If you if you can guess that last one or you can guess all six, I'll still honor that, that, that question offer. But for now, we're going to move on. And then last here, I have some samples for us. These are totally made-up characters. These are not ones that you're going to recognize from anything. But as you look at these characters, you might start to get a little bit of a story that shows up. You might start to think, oh, that character looks like they're kind of a tough person. That character looks like they're kind of silly. We are going to be making our own versions of these. And I'll show you our online resource in just a second. Ah, oh, Squirrel! Oof. Mom Tessori Guide, you are correct. I love that name. <laughs> Those are all SpongeBob characters. If you can guess all six SpongeBob characters, I will answer any question truthfully. Again, appropriate for Facebook. Get a name, Mr. Justin, we'll call it. All right, so get your pencil and your paper. There we go, Mr. Justin, you got it. You can type any question you want, and I will answer it. Whatever you would like, put it in there, and I'll answer it later on after our drawing segment. So if you are going to be joining us uh, by pen and paper, give me a thumbs up or pop in the comments and let me know you're ready. We're going to be using... Um, I'm going to be using a digital program called uh, Sketch.io. Uh, so it, I'll, I'll pull it up here as soon as I remember where my screen is. All right. So I did this earlier. I sketched up a couple of characters, actually four characters. I can't do math. Right. Uh, I sketched up a few characters. Um, and I, what I did is I used very simple lines. Um, I'm not necessarily a trained artist. Right. This is something I pursue as a passion. This is something I pursue for fun. But there's a very key lesson, an important lesson that we teach in Masters of the Dungeon Verses. You don't have to be a professional to create and to enjoy creating. Uh, creation and art and storytelling is all a natural part of us. And to say you can only do that if you make money off of it is uh, one of the worst things that we do, especially here in our country. If you can't make money off of it or if you're not a professional at it, why are you doing it? Um, I've been a writer for years. I have not published a single thing, but I've been a writer for years and I love it. And I love writing for myself, for my family, for my friends that read it, and for my players in Masters of the Dungeon Verse. So I encourage you that when we create here that you don't let yourself get bogged down by, oh, well, this doesn't look good. Most of these don't even look like complete people. They're, there's lines. But I still enjoy creating these. I get to share them with you. And I'll actually make one live with you to show you my process. But I want to show you where I started. If anyone has any, like, impressions of these characters, like, what do you think when you look at them? Are there any, is, is there one that pops out as, like, maybe the hero? Is there one that pops out as the antagonist? Is there one that you don't know what it is? Is it a bush? Is it holding a, a plate of, of, of rocks? Who knows? The the purpose here was that, or the point here is that I created a character 
from nothing and I just started creating. I started the head, I moved down with some sketchy lines and I saw what shape came out. I even had some lag and I said instead of, you know, correcting that mistake, I'm just going to say that that's a that's like a satchel he has attached to his leg and he keeps his magical items in there. So let those be happy little accidents to take from Bob Ross. So if everyone's got their pencil and paper ready, be ready to sketch and be ready to make some beautiful mistakes and happy accidents, right? I am going to show you how this looks. When you, if you want to use Sketch.io, sorry, you're going to see the back of my head a little bit. If you want to use Sketch.io, you, you just go to sketch.io and it'll pull it up, but I'm going to show you what that screen looks like so that way you can see. So for those of you who are just hopping in, we are doing an art uh, kind of experiment. A, we're creating a character silhouette. We just looked at some silhouettes. If you pull back in the video, you can see some from Frozen, from SpongeBob. Mr. Justin gets to ask a question because he guessed all of them. Um, so when you go to sketch.io, it's going to look just like this. And there is a green button right here. It says try out Sketchpad 2019. That's the one that you're going to want. Try out Sketchpad 2019. And when you do that, it will, oh wow, I just clicked on it while looking at the screen. That is like expert level stuff. Um, take notes, those at home. It's amazing. Uh, and then it will pull up. Uh, right now it's saved mine. Thank you, cookies. Uh, that saved mine, so that way it's still up there. But I'm going to go ahead and delete this now. So if you want to go back and look at it, you'll have to rewind the, rewind the stream. I don't know why that one got so long. You'll have to rewind the stream and check it out. I'm going to go ahead and delete this, though. And bear with me as there might be a little bit of lag or me moving my mouse off the screen. All right, so we're going to go to New. And I would love, love, love to see your drawings as we complete these. Uh, please feel free to take a picture, snap a picture, and put it in our comments. I would love to see what you come up with. And I will also be a kind of vessel for your uh, wants. I'm going to start over on the left. I'm going to start sketching a character. I'm going to talk about what I'm discovering about them as I as I work. And then I want you to, uh, if you have ideas for, ooh, maybe they could be a wizard or maybe they have a sword uh, that's magical and very important, let me know, throw in those details, and I'll try to incorporate those into the next one. So we're going to spend about maybe five to ten minutes on this one, um, or if, a little bit longer if you all are having fun. So get your pa paper ready. If you're drawing online on sketch.io, you can use a mouse. If you have a tablet, I am using a bamboo tablet. Um, I took it from my wife, who is a digital artist. She's very good at it um, and has taught me a little bit how to use it. Um, so I will be using this. So it's Miss Kaylee, for those of you who have been to summer camps before. Um, she's the other half of Team Niece, as we are often referred to as. So let us start with some drawing. I'm going to come over here to the left bar. If anyone's using Sketch.io, I'm going to try to uh, kind of walk you through it a little bit. Um, you've you got your toolbar over here on the left side of the screen, if you can follow my mouse. And we're going to click on the thing that's labeled calligraphy. It's a little feather. And when I click on that, it should pull up some different tools for me. But right now, it's actually not working. So I'm going to hit the old refresh and see how that works. There's a Bob Ross energy drink. I had no idea. What Does it just make you chill? Because he doesn't really seem like super energized to me. He seems like just totally even. So is it like a an energy moderation drink rather than an energy boosting drink? I'm curious about that one. Okay, let's give it another shot. There we go. So now you can see on my screen I've got this layer over here. It starts you on the calligraphy pen. Uh, if you have a if you have a uh, a tablet that has line sensitivity, which is indicating the pressure of how hard you push down, um, then you'll want to use Streamer because Streamer actually allows you to use that line sensitivity. I'm going to use that because that's what I'm familiar with. Um, but if you are not, if you're using a mouse, then I would recommend using of those tools. Probably pencil or pen would be best. The other ones are going to give you kind of weird textures, but you know what? We're experimenting and we're having fun, so try it out. Do whichever one you want, but I'm going to hop on streamer and we will.
begin. So I'm going to start on the left. I'm going to start with the head. I'm going to start just kind of making some sketchy lines. That's their head. I'm going to make their head kind of tiny, I think. I'm going to make their shoulders next. Sticking with the tiny head, I'm going to make their body tiny too. And I'm just doing these diagonal lines. I'm not, I'm not trying to draw this. Um, I'm not trying to draw out the lines or anything. Um, I, I'm just sketching it and kind of letting it, it fall out as it does. And this is a, you know, oh, and now we're not drawing at all. That's interesting. All right, we glitched out a bit, so I'm going to refresh, but I got a nice start. I'm going to fill that in a little bit. I'm right now I'm seeing a kind of roguelike character. Reminds me of a character that one of my one of my players uh, in the summer they they were in here earlier. I don't know if you're still in here. Um but Rug the Rogue, I love Rug the Rogue. Um, so I'm thinking someone kind of like that, a little roguelike, a little sneaky, kind of blending into the shadows. Oh man, it doesn't want to work at all. So this happens sometimes. We'll give it one more go. So wind out, throw it out. I'm just starting a new one. We'll start again. We'll see if the same character comes out. I think it will. Yeah, so I'm starting with these sketchy lines. I think I'm going to give them a, like a little point. Maybe they're wearing a kind of spiky hat. That doesn't really blend with the uh, stealthy part of it, but maybe it's a challenge for them to be stealthy even though they wear a hat. Or maybe they are a gnome and it is a gnome culture, like the lawn gnome hats, to have a very pointy hat. So you know what? This character is turning into something totally different than the last one. But that's the beautiful thing about this art and about creation is the characters you see can be totally different. I'm going to have this kind of flare out a little bit. All right, so there's character number one, comments. I do not know, well, actually, I know of Gravity Falls. Um, I have not seen it, but I will have to check that out. Um, why uh, do you reference it? I'm curious. So any guesses on what this first character could be? I have something in mind, but I'm curious if you all match up. I'm also curious what yours are coming out like. I'd love to see your sketches. We're all kind of sketching together and hanging out. Well, Unless you're just watching and then I'm sketching here alone, um, which makes me sad. So sketch with me, please. <laughs> Rug for life. <laughs> I was hoping that you were still here when I made that reference. Yes, Rug the Rogue and Unicorn Girl, the Knight. I'm excited to see those characters again. Maybe we'll see them this Saturday. All right, well, you guys are all guessing. Mr. Justin, don't forget to throw in your question before the end of the hour. Don't forget to throw that in. And it looks like, yes, this Saturday, we are hosting an online program. So check that out. If you're interested below, that's when we will be playing D&D &D for real or another role-playing game if we decide. That's the great thing about it. All right, let's start with another character. Oh, I think I'm feeling something weird this time. So I'm going to yeah, we're going to do something totally different. Totally different.
Oh, wow, that is a crazy looking foot, but you know, we're rolling with it. Yes, there we have another character to this weird little cast. Anyone have an idea for what that character is? Is it a blob? Is it a rat? Is it a dragon? Who knows? <laughs> because it is very cool. All right, fair enough. That's that's all I need. I'll check out Gravity Falls today. We even have a class named after it. Well, not after it, but we have a class. All right. I don't have any pictures yet. I don't know if anyone's drawing along with me. I'd love to see it. At least let me know if you're drawing. Checking to see if I missed any in the comments. I didn't. Just waiting on Mr. Justin still. Waiting on some drawings. Let's do another. I'm thinking we need a bad guy. Maybe an antagonist for this crew. Right now I'm seeing personally on the left I'm seeing a wizard. But see how he's taking like a really wide stance. He's putting his arms out there. He's a flamboyant wizard or like a, a very eccentric wizard. He wants everyone to see him. And then I think we've got a rat king over next to him. Maybe it's his friend who is a rat who grew from one of his spells. And now he just made a made a crown and calls himself the rat king. Who knows? But let's let's draw an antagonist on the right side for them. If you have any ideas for the antagonist, like should they have horns, should they have wings, should they be big, small, throw it in. Otherwise, I'm just going to draw something myself. But I'd love to draw something based off of what you say. So I'm going to start I'll start up here with the head. Going to make some sketchy lines. I'm going to make the head kind of squat, I think. Mm, I don't see anything, so I'm thinking maybe instead of horns, which is kind of a classic villain, right? Villains always have horns. I'm going to do some ears. Some big ears. Right now it looks like Baby Yoda. So that's an interesting interesting villain concept that's coming out. What can we add to make it look less like something Disney wants to sue me for? Or send a cease and desist. I'm sure they'd be nice at first. Should they have a big body, a small body? Should they have like a snake body? Do we want to mix it up? Hmm. I'm not seeing anything, so I'm going to roll with something else. We'll see. We'll start kind of big, but then to make it weird, we're going to get real small. If you want a character to be kind of scary, then you might want to make them look weird. Or look kind of normal, but then a little off. Ooh, add a furry Y and X body. Furry Lynx body. Okay, a furry lynx body. Okay. Let's... I have to select that, so hold on a second. I will I'll delete what I just made. So if you're using Sketch.io and you want to delete something, you have to come over here to the mouse in the top left, and uh, then you click on the mouse, and then from there you can select items and you can uh, hit backspace to delete them. So if you are questioning on how that works, uh, so now I just hit backspace and that'll delete that. A furry lynx body. Okay, um, so if I want it to be furry, I need to, I need to like show that in some way, so. So I'll try to make those look like hair coming out. It's supposed to be a lynx body, so that should be bipedal. But I'm not quite sure how to attach a bipedal, or sorry, a quadruped body to that. So I'll, I'll figure it out. I'll try. You 
you know, I was going to fill it in to keep with the style, but I'm really, really enjoying this kind of just outline that we're getting, which is a little bit against what I said, so technically I'm breaking my own rules right now. But it reminds me of uh, Where the Wild Things Are. If anyone's ever read that book, I love the book. I'm unsure about the movie. I remember being a little scared, and I wasn't a child when I watched it. It was the, the monsters made into the, the CG was not as approachable as the cartoon. I'm curious what your thoughts are. A wolf-eared bandit. Ooh, I like that. Greetings, Irina, or whoever might be using Irina's account. A wolf-eared bandit, I like that. So what is a detail we could add to make sure that people know that they're a bandit? Maybe some, like, hmm, I don't know, a sword, maybe? So we will fill this in a little bit. What do bandits usually take? Bandits usually like take money from people. So maybe if I wanted to show that he has stolen stuff, I could put some some loot behind him. A lynx is a thin th furry mole from Canada, Europe, and Spain. Yeah, so what I drew doesn't look at all like a lynx, does it? <laughs> it is furry, though. Oh, Mr. Justin, good question. I will answer that one. Um, that's a good question, though. Uh, it's actually a very fun and very nerdy story. I mean, what other kind of story would it be if it was if I was telling it? Yeah, where the wild things are. The movie was a little too dark, right? It was it was kind of, Jonathan. Good to see you. So I'll try <laughs> I'll try again on the links, me and another. But I do want to allow some time for our reading here at the end and a chance to answer Mr. Justin's question because it is a it is a fun one. Um, it's a very fun one. <laughs> So yeah, I'm going to put a bag of gold down here by him. That kind of looks like a rock. Yeah, that looks like a rock. Hmm. <laughs> kind of hard to make a silhouette of a bag. We could put some coins out, maybe. Oh, and now we are frozen. So if other people are using an eyeless wolf-eared yeti. Yeah, it is eyeless right now. We're doing character silhouettes. If you go back in the video a little bit, you can see some silhouettes from some different movies. Um, feel free to draw your own and share it. I'd love to see your character designs. I feel like I've come up with some fun ones, at least, so far. So let me refresh this. Um, if anyone else is having that issue as they're using Sketch, um, where your pen just stops working, just hop up to the refresh, refresh it, and that should work. Uh, like like we saw earlier, it saves your work, so you can come right back to it. Yes, yeah, so I'll put some coins down on the ground next to him. Oh, he's a he's a bad guy, so he's should probably have like a sword. So we'll give him we'll put a silhouette of a sword like this. Coming over his back. Make him look nice and menacing. All right, I think we've got room for one or two more characters down here. If you have any suggestions, we'll do them. But we are about to start our reading. And remember to stay tuned. At the end of the reading, I will drop a discount for our uh, sessions this weekend. There, there are uh, four different sessions, or sorry, three sessions, and there are four spots for each session. So if you are interested in it, you know, hop on it because I'm sure there are a lot of people stuck at home who need something for entertainment, and um, and this is a good enriching entertainment as well. So let's do one more character before we hop in. We've got a wizard and a rat <laughs> who thinks he's a king. Um, I want to make something. Hmm. Let's start with this box. We'll see what comes out of it.
thinking perhaps they have a mechanized companion who carries all of their stuff. But he's actually a really deep thinker, and he wants people to know him for, like, or know it for its, like, its poetry. But all they want it to do is carry stuff. So give it these kind of, like, long walker legs. And to really make it look mechanical, I'm going to give it something that we don't really see, like, in nature as much, which are these, like, like big clawed feet. Uh, we need some, maybe some gears would really set it apart as... So I'll try to draw some gears here. Uh, I mean, I, I love steampunk. If those those of you who cyberpunk, any other my camera, hold on. Uh, steampunk is basically there. We are is basically the idea of development stopping at the industrial revolution, and we rely on steam technologies. There's some really really cool art that comes out of it. Put some steam in this picture coming off of this guy. So that way we can tell he's a. He's a steam robot. So that's going to end our, our drawing segment. My contribution to it. But I still have yet to, to see anyone hopping in. So if there is anyone who made a drawing during this time, maybe you want to finish it up while I read, uh, please feel free to do that. I would love love to see what drawings you came up with. Or if you came up with a little story uh, you know, that went along with your character, please feel free to share that. The, the more you share, the, the more I get to know about you, and the more that we get to uh, really build something together, which is exactly what Masters of the Dungeonverse is all about. It's about building together and creating a narrative that we share, which really, that's kind of, uh, you know, a really good uh, analogy for life, because we build our shared narrative. That's exactly what we're doing right now. We could all be sitting at home. We could all be doing nothing. We could all be alone. But instead, we're writing a narrative, all of us, those of you who are in here, those of us who are putting it on, the other 20 other companies that are doing this, right? The, the other places that are doing it, Disney releasing things, we, we're creating our narrative. We've been given an interesting situation, and I love the narrative that we're creating so far. So speaking of narrative, we're going to hop back to my very warm and comforting fireplace. Speaking of our narrative, uh, something I will be doing each day uh, that we come on here is I will be reading a little story time. Reading is a huge passion of mine. Um, uh, it helped me get through a lot of things when I was younger and gave me uh, stimulation for my imagination, and helped me just enjoy my world more. Um, and so I'm reading one, uh, one of my favorites, one of the earliest pieces that I read. It's from C.S. Lewis. So reading part of Chronicle, the Chronicles of Narnia, we're going to start with The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. And there are actually two different ways that you can um, you can read the, line, uh, the Chronicles of Narnia, actually, which is interesting. You can read it in a chronological order, which means the events happen from A to B to C to D to E. Or um, you can read it in kind of thematic order. Um, so I, I read it in the thematic order when I first got it because I didn't know that there was a different way to read it. And so I just read it by what was in the book, um, the, the collection I had, and it said to read the, the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe first. Man, this is, if you haven't read the series before, it's a fantastic series, um, so full of adventure and exploration and really positive messages throughout, um, very allegorical in a lot of ways. Uh, it is an incredible story, and I can remember just all the times that it transported me to different places. I can remember going to my great aunt's house 
taking one or two of these because I would read through it in the weekend and and just a lot it was great so I'm really excited to share that with you now um reading The Lion, the Witch, and the Robe. This is my copy here. It's the full collection. Uh, my son Malcolm, when he was about a year old, uh, remodeled it. So that happens. <laughs> so let, let's hop right into it. We are going to... All right. The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Don't forget to share your pictures while I'm reading. And then, Mr. Justin, I'll answer your question right at the end. Chapter 1. Lucy looks into a wardrobe. Once there were four children whose names were Peter, Susan, Edmund, and Lucy. This story is about something that happened to them when they were sent away from London during the war because of the air raids. They were sent to the house of an old professor who lived in the heart of the country, ten miles from the nearest railway station and two miles from the nearest post office. He had no wife, and he lived in a very large house with a housekeeper called Mrs. McCready and three servants. Their names were Ivy, Margaret, and Betty, but they do not come into the story much. He himself was a very old man with shaggy white hair, sorry, with shaggy white hair, which grew ever over most of his face as well as on his head, and they liked him almost at once. But on the first evening, when he came out to meet them at the front door, he was so odd-looking that Lucy, who was the youngest, was a little afraid of him, and Edmund, who was the next youngest, wanted to laugh and had to keep on pretending he was blowing his nose to hide it. As soon as they had said goodnight to the professor and gone upstairs on the first night, the boys came into the girls' room and they all talked it over. We've fallen on our feet, and no mistake, said Peter, this is going to be perfectly splendid. That old chap will let us do anything we like. I think he's an old dear, said Susan. Oh, come off it, said Edmund, who was tired and pretending not to be tired, which always made him bad-tempered. Don't go talking on like that. Like what? In any way, it's time you were in bed. Trying to talk like mother, said Edmund. And who are you to say when I'm to go to bed? Go to bed yourself. Hadn't we all better go to bed, said Lucy. There's sure to be a row if we're heard talking here. No, there won't, said Peter. I tell you, this is the sort of house where no one's going to mind what we do. Anyway, they won't hear us. It's about ten minutes' walk from here down to that dining room and any amount of stairs and passages in between. What's that noise, said Lucy suddenly. It was a far larger house than she had ever been in before, and the thought of all those long passages and rows of doors leading into empty rooms was beginning to make her feel a little creepy. It's only a bird, silly, said Edmund. It's an owl, said Peter. This is going to be a wonderful place for birds. I shall go to bed now. I say, let's go and explore tomorrow. You might find anything in a place like this. Did you see those mountains as we came along? In the woods? There might be eagles. There might be stags. There will be hawks. Badgers, said Lucy. Foxes, said Edmund. Rabbits, said Susan. But when the next morning came, there was a steady rain falling, so thick that when you looked out of the window, you could see neither the mountains nor the woods nor even the stream in the garden. Of course it would be raining, said Edmund. They had just finished their breakfast with the professor and were upstairs in the room he had set apart for them, a long, low room with two windows looking out in one direction and two in another. Do stop grumbling, Ed. Ten to one, it'll clear up in an hour or so. And in the meantime, we're pretty well off. There's a wireless and lots of books. Not for me, said Peter. I'm going to explore in the house. Everyone agreed to this, and that was how the adventures began. It was the sort of house that you never seemed to come to the end of, and it was full of unexpected places. The first few doors they tried led only into spare bedrooms, as everyone had expected that they would. But soon they came to a very long room full of pictures, and, they, and there they found a suit of armor, and after that, there was a room all hung with green, with a harp in one corner, and then came three steps down and five steps up, and then a kind of little upstairs hall, and a door that led out onto a balcony, and then a whole series of rooms that led into each other and were lined with books, most of them very old books, and some bigger than a Bible in a church. And shortly after that, they looked into a room that was quite empty, except for one big wardrobe, the sort that has a looking glass in the door. 
There was nothing else in the room at all except a dead blue bottle on the window sill. Nothing there, said Peter, and they all trooped out again. All except Lucy. She stayed behind because she thought it would be worthwhile. Trying the door of the wardrobe even though she felt almost sure that it would be locked. To her surprise, it opened quite easily, and two mothballs dropped out. Looking on into the inside, she saw several coats hanging up, mostly long fur coats. There was nothing Lucy liked so much as the smell and feel of fur. She immediately stepped into the wardrobe and got in among the coats and rubbed her face against them, leaving the door open, and of course because she knew that it was very foolish to shut oneself into any wardrobe. Soon she went further in and found that there was a second row of coats hanging up behind the first one. It was almost quite dark in there, and she kept her arms stretched out in front of her so as not to bump her face into the back of the wardrobe. She took a step further in, then two or three steps, always expecting to feel woodwork against the tips of her fingers, but she could not feel it. This must be a simply enormous wardrobe, thought Lucy going still further in and pushing the soft folds of the coats aside to make room for her. Then she noticed that there was something crunching under her feet. I wonder, is that more mothballs? She thought, stooping down to feel it with her hand. But instead of feeling the hard, smooth wood of the floor of the wardrobe, she felt something soft and powdery and extremely cold. This is very strange, she said, and went on a step or two further. We will end there for now. If you'd like to know where Lucy is and what happened to her, please tune in tomorrow for the next excerpt from The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. That also has given us our code for $5 off of the sessions this weekend. You can type in all caps wardrobe whenever you sign up and at checkout, and that'll take $5 off of your total. We would love to have you come check out Masters of the Dungeonverse. Please feel free to reach out to me personally if you have any questions. I'm going to put my email in the comments right now. So if anyone has any questions, you reach out. I'm more than happy to tell you about that. But the code is WARDROBE, all caps. Put that in at checkout. There are four spots available for each one. So if you are interested, definitely get on it because I see a lot of people wanting to come and check this out. It went really it was a great opportunity to connect with more people and to connect with some people who might be a little too far away from us. So thank you all for tuning in to my, my fireside chat. I really appreciate you being here, taking the time to you know welcome me into your home. And as I was setting up today, there was a little bit of like nervousness, like, oh my gosh, how many people are coming into my home? <laughs> this is craziness. Uh, but you are all are welcoming me and welcoming me into your homes and into your day and into your very special time as we all deal with this. So thank you for for welcoming me. Thank you for having me and being here and participating in this. Like I said earlier, it's the narrative that we create. And man, I gotta say that I'm really happy with the everyone we're we're creating a good narrative and that's i mean can we ask for any more so with this i'll sign off i'll see you all tomorrow at one we will be making a map of a fantasy world so i would like you to get some big paper if you have it uh, or a whiteboard even could work you'll need something like rice or lentils or beans something that we can use and then clean and then make into food later well cook it later because it's already food but we'll be making a map. I'm excited to show you how to create a fantasy world and how to fill it up with lots of interesting stories and characters. I'm also really excited to read more of The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. You all have a fantastic day. Stay positive, stay healthy, and we'll see you soon. Thank you, Macy. Bye.